Hey everyone, and welcome to another edition of Drone Life News. Joining me as always is the editor in chief of dronelife.com, Miss Miriam McNabb. Miriam, how's it going today? It is going great. Thanks for having me. As always, we got some fun stuff to talk about. We do have some fun stuff to talk about, and uh, let's get right in it. So in the last week, we've had some new uh, drones come out, and from a popular yet uh, ever-growing manufacturer, as I believe in a previous news story, you talked about how Autel's market share was growing significantly. And it also seems like as DJI's enterprise share is going down drastically, Autel launches a new drone to compete in the enterprise market. What's going on here, Miriam? So I got to see the Autel uh, Enterprise bundle at AUVSI and at Commercial UAV Expo. And, you know, there isn't anything super dramatic, you know, a little bit longer arms, a really beefed up communication system. You know, the communication system can go out to eight miles, which they recognize most people can't use right now, but it does mean like it's much stronger wherever you are and however you use it. So nothing really dramatic, but when I talked to Autel, they said, you know, that's kind of the point. What we want is to offer people a better bundle. You know, we've upgraded some accessories. We've upgraded some features. We've listened to customers and made improvements where they wanted. But at the end of the day, we want you to have an enterprise drone that you know is going to launch and land the way you expect it to every single time. That That's really the point. We're going to keep making incremental improvements. We're going to keep uh, innovating. But what you've got here with this enterprise bundle is, you know, improvements upon a theme that isn't going to throw anybody for a loop and isn't going to introduce any sort of dramatic new pitfalls. Gotcha. Very interesting. Just uh, just in time as another uh, lookalike or a lookalike of this drone is uh, getting a new evolution. Yes. <laughs> So speaking of drones that look like that, so you're hearing all kinds of leaks and interesting stuff about something new coming out of another Chinese drone manufacturer. It seems like the leaks are definitely pouring out regarding the new Mavic 3, Miriam. And as you know, with the Mavic 2 release, in fact, I think you were you were at that uh, release. If I I, I think so. Yeah, because I remember seeing so many familiar faces in uh, New York that day. That was a lot of fun. Um, And that said, if you remember the Mavic 2 Pro, we got two editions, right? The Pro and the Zoom. One was providing, obviously, Zoom, and the Mavic 2 Pro was a larger kind of form factor sensor, their first Hasselblad sensor. It looks like there's going to be three models, well, technically two models plus a Fly More combo with the Mavic 3. It looks like we're going to get a Mavic 3 Cine version, which essentially actually has a wide format micro four thirds camera and a zoom camera. It'll essentially be the equivalent of six times zoom, but there's not an actual zoom feature. You're kind of switching between the two cameras that are on this now dual, um, you know, gimbal payload. Then we're going to have the Mavic 3 and the Mavic 3 Fly More combo. This is just going to be one sensor, the more widescreen format sensor. I believe it's a 35 millimeter equivalent. The Cine version, though, is also going to have an onboard SSD for recording, which makes you wonder, well, is this going to allow for faster uh, frame rates? Is it also going to allow for like the Apple ProRes codec? Now, in these leaks, we've also seen some very, very interesting details that I haven't seen actually reported by other outlets, which made me write an article myself, which is if you pay attention to the details, you see that DJI included a mechanical shutter with the Mavic 3. Does this mean that it's going to be essentially replacing the Phantom 4 Pro as the powerhouse of mapping drones? Well, it sure looks like it as the Mavic 3 well, it would be more portable than the Phantom, offer a larger uh, camera sensor, which means better resolution, and that would also reduce the overall time for mapping acquisition as a whole. Now, the fact that they added this expensive shutter, only on the wide frame, by the way, or wide wide format camera, 
showcases where DJI is really going to really support the market with one aircraft that is more like a platform. So very interesting to see all these leaks. It also looks like, uh, if you remember, on the, uh, what is it called, on the FPV drone, DJI did something very, very interesting by adding arms that almost have the same sort of physics as a wing. So in forward flight, this drone actually produces lift below the arms. And I believe that we're gonna see the exact same thing on the Mavic 3. And that's how they actually got more flight time. You can even see that the, for the first time, DJI is cantering the arms of the Mavic 3 like the Inspire 2 to give more stability as we're gonna see prop wash kind of come down from the arms in an X rather than straight down. So very, very interesting details to come. Uh, and frankly, you know, a lot of people thought that the Mavic 3 would be delayed until the first quarter of 2022 due to the chip shortage. And also with so many manufacturers in China being intermittently shut down because of Chinese power consumption limitations, it really makes you wonder, are we going to see this drone in mid-October as the leakers are saying, or will it be quarter one of 2022? One thing is for sure here, Miriam, is that try to find a Mavic 2 Pro online Hard, very hard. Interesting. Well, I can't wait to see what happens. Um, super interesting to see kind of new innovations. Eventually those become the new standards, right? So uh, we'll see what happens. Definitely, yeah. we'll see what happens. In this next piece of news, it seems like one particular provider of Lance authorizations, uh, air maps and other information, has actually, well, fallen out of the grace of the FAA. Who are we talking about? That's right, AirMap. Miriam, what is going on? You can't use AirMap anymore for a Lance authorization? Yeah, hard to say. So um, I'm hesitant to make any any definitive uh, statements on this. I did reach out to AirMap to get a comment, um, did not hear back from them. I was in a, a drone chat room, an AUVSI chapter chat room a couple of weeks ago, and a gentleman who's the lead on the uh, safety team in Texas said that they were getting a lot of calls from providers saying, hey, all of a sudden our uh, Lance functionality on AirMap is not working. When you actually now look at the FAA website where AirMap was, of course, one of the original uh, Lance providers, AirMap is no longer listed as, as a provider on a list that was updated uh, earlier this month. So hard to say, maybe um, just a temporary thing. Uh, you know, certainly um, there's a large number of things that could go wrong and cause that situation. But right now they are no longer listed as a Lance provider and the functionality is, is, uh, not working is offline, I guess you'd say on their app. So um, interesting to see what'll happen. Um, you know, not a lot of communication from AirMap on the subject. So we'll see what's going on. Very interesting to say the least. Uh, a lot, I mean, I know there's been a lot of speculation in the industry about this and we really don't have any information. I will say, Miriam, it's really surprising, you know, this story isn't necessarily brand new. It's been around for about a week. And unfortunately, due to family issues, I couldn't join you for a new show last week. But even still in this time, we haven't heard from AirMap. I don't think anyone has. Is that right? Uh, as far as I know, certainly um, uh, my request for comment was uh, didn't get a response. So yeah, not not sure what's going on. Um, I do not believe that their customers got uh, an indication either because um, certainly those calling into the safety team were definitely surprised to find their capability offline. Yeah, very, very interesting to say the least. Well, if you are looking for a Lance provider and you like the convenience of AirMap, I know many of you do even though we've done, well, previous to the Drone Life News, we've done a lot of shows about AirMap and, uh, and some of the things that they've been doing with their data. But if you guys are looking for an alternative, highly recommend that you check out Open Sky. 
uh, by Google. They integrated it with Google Maps. And I have to say, there are a lot of anti-Google people out there, and I, I understand it. But I will say they nailed convenience, Miriam. They really make it easy and, uh, and simple. So if you're looking for an alternative, check that out. Now, into our next piece of news. If you're looking for an alternative from DJI or Autel because simply, well, maybe they don't have what you want. Maybe you like to drive a Lexus, right? With the headlights that essentially <laughs> move, right? When you turn your vehicle. Well, now you can have a drone that, well, moves the obstacle avoidance as you yaw or rotate as well. Which brings us to our next piece of news regarding the Analfi AI. Miriam, what is going on with this drone? I thought they were gonna launch it already. Yeah, so, well, I think they are, or at least soft launching, and so this is something that your audience may be interested in. Parrot has announced uh, the Anafi, I like the way you say it better, the Anafi AI uh, Early Access Program, and so that is for professional drone operators. Public safety also can get in on this. Uh, you can apply to receive one of the first Anafi AI models and give feedback and actually contribute to the platform a little bit. So, wow! So people can get their exciting stuff. You know, I wanted to kind of call that the Locust drone because of the way that it like looks, but. <laughs> Uh, maybe a praying uh, mantis drone, something. Yeah. A praying mantis drone. Is that what you said? <laughs> yeah, it is. It is definitely the insect. Um, the insect marketing that they did was actually phenomenal and a little creepy. <laughs> you know. Hey, you know what? It was a head turner, Miriam. So I definitely got people to look, myself included. That's for sure. So very interested to see uh, what comes out with that aircraft. And uh, yeah, lots of new stuff coming out. I mean, it seems like the end of this year is going to be very interesting uh, for the drone world as a whole. Now, I know my next question we didn't talk about in pre-show. So if you're like, you know what, Paul, I may not be prepared to answer this one. That's fine. We'll just delete the segment. But uh, my question to you is, you know, with the chip shortage going on, uh, with a lot of the international travel, you know, slow to come back. Do you think that this is going to have any impact, these supply chain constraints? Do you think it's going to have any impact to the drone market as a whole for the latter half of this year? I got to say that I kind of do. Um, and this, again, this is strictly my opinion. Uh, so please take it for what it's worth. But I do see um, the chip shortage and supply chain, which is not just affecting the drone industry. It is affecting everyone. I mean, it's affecting cars and and all kinds of manufacturing. You know, I was trying to get a fridge earlier this year and you can't buy a refrigerator uh, anywhere. So Certainly, those manufacturing issues are affecting every single industry, and I think that they're affecting the drone industry as well. And I'll tell you why, uh, Paul. You know, the drone fleet is actually slower to change than most people think. So you can hear a lot of hype about a new player to the drone industry. You can uh, think that you know a lot about it. You can... Um, you know, there'll be, there'll be huge change about new models and new models get released. And when you look at actual statistics that describe the fleet here in the U.S., I'm always shocked that, you know, like 3DR still comes in at number five or six. Okay, because people are still flying those solos. They loved them. They didn't break, so they don't want to give them up, right? So um, so people, there are a lot of people who don't buy new drones until they absolutely have to. Now, of course, there are also a lot of new players joining the uh, drone industry. You know, a large industry is trying to scale their drone programs. They had these trial programs and now they want to scale up. There are new players coming in saying, okay, we now recognize the benefit of drones. The technology has gotten better. We want now to use drones more regularly for power line inspection across the whole country or, or whatever it is. Those people need drones. And I think, honestly, they're going to have a hard time uh, finding 
seeing them. I do think that there are probably going to be wait lists. And I think that some of the new players who are offering great technology may be a little bit slower to take market share than we might have thought because, um, you know, it's just very hard to produce enough to meet demand right now. And I think everybody is going to have uh, problems from that. We may, we may see a tiny bit of a, of a slowdown while manufacturers kind of rev up to meet demand. Yeah, and we have some clients who ordered some of the drones off the blue SUAS uh, list earlier this spring and still have yet to get them. And uh, I know that there is a used car index for used car prices, like the Manaheim or Mayheim or whatever index. Uh, and I know, you know, I, I got a new car this summer just because uh, the dealership pretty much offered me what I paid for it three years ago, uh, even after putting 100,000 miles on that thing. Uh, and I wonder if the index of used drone prices, if there is such a thing, uh, would be <laughs> would be showcasing an increase in used drone prices with this, uh, this shortage, because it's not just a shortage of microprocessors anymore. We're seeing shortages of all sorts of, of, of things. I mean, even the uh, shipping prices on our landing pads to get them here from Shenzhen has gone up uh, pretty significantly. So... It's, uh, it's not to mention staffing shortages too. Yeah. Even if you're based here in the U.S. and you're getting everything from the U.S., it's very tough to get staff. Also. Yeah, it sure is. It sure is. And I know they say that our uh, unemployment uh, rate is like six percent, but if you look at the uh, what is it, the rate of participation, it is below 2019 levels. So it's kind of all relative at this point. Um, but Miriam, thank you so much for your insights and uh, very interesting to see if we'll hear more from AirMap. But thank you again for doing the Drone Life new show with me. I appreciate it. Always a pleasure. See you next week. Sounds good, Miriam. Well, that's going to do it for us today. If you thought this was a good show or a mediocre show, well, then let us know. Uh, let us know also in the comments if you have any tips or suggestions on any of these news items or more to come. We appreciate you joining us today and we'll see you next time for another edition of Drone Life News. See you later.